All right, guys, I got really good news here. I knew something was funny because I saw this thing was trying to program. So the issue with this radio is this cable right here. And I had to take the knife out. And it's just that the, the cable, it doesn't want to fit this radio. Okay? So the cable works just fine. It's just that it can't get into the radio. They've put too much plastic in the way. And so I just shaved a little bit off and pushed it and held it in there really hard while I scanned it. So let's get into here and see. This is the read information. What's the full screen look like when I click it? Um, nothing. So we have channel mode. I've put some... Two, I put three channels in here. I don't know what this other nonsense is. It's just like whatever. So we can program this radio this way. And um, I'm also wondering if maybe uh, some of this other software might work. Okay. So I had tried. This is the P15U V CPS. And then this one here, the T6UV. Um, that one somebody else said worked. Let's see if it does. I'm not seeing any kind of interaction. Maybe if I squeeze. Oops. I hit the PTT. So. Um, let me try this again. Okay, so that software fails every time. Um, so we'll go back into here to this other one. The... Um, for the GPS Pro, and um, let's see, I go into settings here just to check our COM port. We're on the right one. Okay, let's go to read. Let me see if the radio does anything. Nothing. So we're not going to touch the radio because it might be the cable still. We'll close out this software. We'll go in here. And we'll open this one. And I don't understand why all these seem to be different. And even though they all say they're like based on the P15 UV CPS. Okay, so. Read. Uh, click. Okay. There you see. The radio is reading. So, this one came off of the Meckler website. And then we go to look at the channels, VFOA, and it'll tell you what the settings are for each VFO. We have the RX frequency, I don't know if we can change that. Um, 159. I think it's just where it's at. Um, scan add. Frequency hopping. Hmm. Okay. 449. Channel edit. Channel edit, so channel edit sh shows me this channel. So let's go in here and we'll do the channel. Uh, um, Simplex. Okay, so we can't type in the full thing. Let's see if we can do caps. S M P L E X. Simplex. Frequency hopping, <laughs> channel spacing wide. All right, so now I don't know what happens when you if you do this. I don't see a save button. Okay, so it, it is in the table there though. So, um, so I'm on that one, and then go channel edit. It should, I think, pull up that one. So we go Ming Mingus. That's Mingus Mountain Repeater. And then as soon as we do that, 
It pops up in here. Um, I don't know what RXQT, DQT is. Wide, high. Let's see here. We want to see everything. Scan, add, yes. Power, high. And then I guess we need to... I'm going to do click more. Uh, it's not showing me. Lord, it's not showing me the whole thing. So what's strange is that's a repeater. Okay, well, we go back into here. Okay. So we got, um, oh, okay, RX frequency, TX frequency. Uh, and then... I guess they call it a QT instead of a something else. QT, DQT. Well, let's go into here and see what one of these does when we click on it. So you get simplex. So it just gives us a PL tone. Okay. We want none. Okay. So I think we would pretty much just go in here and enter like whatever we want to enter. Now, what I'm curious is if I program a, a 220... Um, memory in here if it'll actually work. Some of these that's actually uh, the only way you can get 220 to work. Um, so anyway, um, let's see what else is in here. We got general settings, uh, boot screen logo, one and two, timeout, squelch level, alarm sound. Um, so you need some basic settings in here. Uh, CPS password, you don't want that. Uh, channel A display name and number. Channel B display frequency and number. Okay. So if we leave it like that, then I can do the channel sync. Um, we need a dual standby. A bunch of different other things. Okay, phone system. What is that? So this is DTMF codes. So this is pretty basic. Um, but it's cool. Like... Now I have a radio that has 999 memories, and I don't have to enter them completely by hand. It would sure be nice to go into Chirp and just go click repeater book and put everything I want in there, but, I mean, you know, it is what it is.